25 uh, women out of the 100 women watching this video will have fibroids yes it's that common a condition now women are detected with fibroids either uh, through an ultrasound which they have done uh, for some other reason or when they go to a gynecologist with heavy bleeding or pain during periods or with some other symptom i dr sudesh nare We'll talk all about fibroids. Of course, I'm going to talk about the basics like what are they, what symptoms that it causes, what treatments available. But more importantly, I'm going to try and give answers to some of the queries that you may have, the answers of which is difficult to find in Google. What are fibroids? Fibroids are essentially benign outgrowths from the wall of the uterus or wall of your womb. What are the types of fibroids? Now there are broadly three types of fibroids depending on the wall of the womb from which it arises. So if it comes out from the outer wall of the womb, it is called a subserous. If it comes from the middle or muscle layer of the womb, it is called intramural. And if it is coming from the inner wall of the womb, which bleeds during menstruation, it is called a sub mucus fibroid. So why is it important to know the type of fibroids? One of the most important factor which determines the uh, active, how active the fibroid is or how symptom producing the fibroid is, is the type of the fibroid. For example, if it is arising from the inner layer of the womb, which is the most active layer of the womb, the submucous types are the ones which is most symptom producing fibroid and needs to be treated ASAP. Whereas the fibroids starting from the fibroids coming out from the outer wall of the womb, which is any which way is a very inactive part of the womb. These fibroids are slow growing, they are least symptom producing and treatment of these fibroids can be delayed. What symptoms can fibroids produce? One, heavy bleeding during periods. Two, pain during periods. Three, pain while having sex. Four, pressure symptoms, especially with fibroids more than six centimeter, there can be increased frequency of uh, urination or sometimes constipation. Five, dull nagging pain in the lower tummy. Six, a feeling of fullness or heaviness or a feeling of bulge in the lower tummy. Seven, rarely these some fibroids can cause fertility issues as well. That is, they can interfere with you getting pregnant. Fibroids can also be completely asymptomatic, which means that you don't have any of the symptoms that I have mentioned above. And you suddenly discover that you have fibroids either by an examination with, with your doctor or by an ultrasound examination done for something else. What are the treatments available for fibroids? You might choose to do nothing about them if they are not giving you any troubles that you can feel or if your doctor feels that there are no potential harm in them. The treatment options available are in form of medications which can be mostly hormonal, sometimes strong hormones injections which are again hormonal the burning or melting of the fibroids by gas particles a process called an uterine artery embolization or by ultrasonic heat called a focused mri a surgical treatment of the fibroids by removing either the fibroid or sometimes the entire womb with the fibroids to prevent the fibroids coming back again and again now this can be done through a laparoscopy or keyhole procedure or a hysteroscopy which is a no hole procedure very rarely you might need a big cut in your tummy especially the fibroid is huge when does my doctor need to treat my fibroids one if the fibroids are giving you heavy bleeding or pain or painful sex two if the heavy bleeding is enough to cause a drop in your hemoglobin or is leaving you very fatigued three if the fibroid is submucosal four sometimes if the fibroid is more than five centimeter five almost always if the fibroid is more than eight centimeter now when can medicine work very effectively for my fibroids one 
If the fibroids are small in size that is less than 5 cm and still they are giving you symptoms like heavy bleeding, medicines can definitely arrest the bleeding and arrest the growth of the fibroids though temporarily. Two, if you are close to menopause and fibroids are actually giving you heavy bleeding, medicines can be given till you reach the menopause. Three, if you have uh, a tendency towards fibroids, if you are having recurrent fibroids, your doctor might suggest a hormonal loop inside the womb which can actually shrink the small fibroids and also prevent them from coming back. When do I definitely need surgery as a treatment option for my fibroids? Now I can understand that the surgery, the word surgery is very scary but sometimes that's the only and the best available treatment for fibroids that can be offered. So what, what are these conditions? One, if the fibroid is more than seven to eight centimeter. Two, if the fibroid is large enough to give pressure on the water bag in the front or the poo bag behind, which is called the rectum. If the fibroid is in very close uh, proximity, to the pipes that can that carry the urine from the kidney to the water bag. Four, if the fibroid potentially can cause fertility issues or interfere with you getting pregnant, or it can potentially cause complications during a pregnancy. Five, when the fibroids get uh, damaged or rotten from inside, called a, a process called degeneration. Six, when the fibroids suddenly grow in size. Seventh, if the doctor, if your doctor feels running some tests uh, that the fibroids can be potentially cancerous. Eighth, if the fibroids do not shrink in size after menopause or sometimes if they start growing after menopause. The fibroid surgery isn't really that complicated and uh, it's, it's a fairly common surgery. Laparoscopic or keyhole procedures or scarless procedures have the advantage of less pain, less bleeding, a very short hospital stay of two days and a, almost a complete recovery by about two to three weeks. You have the right to understand and be informed about what your body is going through. The more informed you are, the better equipped you will be to participate in the decision making along with your doctor. And the more involved you are in their decision making, the better you will respond to the treatment given to you. Take care, stay safe and be in the best of the health. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss any videos by us.